Unseen blade is the deadliest. Yo guys, this is one of my first placement games on my Lowmaster account. And we went Conqueror against Scion with Ignite Flash, Triple Haste. Went full damage. But I thought I was against Swain. So unfortunately, I don't get to play the setup against Swain, which is what I really like. And usually against Scion in the past, I would go first strike. But now I have these runes, so I ask, can I verse Swain? But he doesn't answer. And yeah, let's just see how this game goes. There ends up being an invade, which causes Scion to waste his teleport, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, the level 1 against him, you don't want to push because he's very strong with his grasp and his Q. So you want to, you know, kind of treat him like he's a ranged champion in a way. I was like, there's no way that Q hits, but whatever. But yeah, you don't want to push because he can zone you off. He can poke you out a bit. You know, his Q is a decent range. Right there, I kind of just mess up. But then I'm like, okay, well, let's trade then because he's trolling as well. He got a good trade, but he stayed a bit too much. So I'm able to just... Poke him out a bit. And with Conqueror, you can go for these kind of not full in all in trades. So not fully all in, but, you know, extend the trade and then walk away instead of just a short trade. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy the wave is pushing towards me. This is what I want. Um, but in general, against Scion, it's quite hard because he kind of just wins a lot of the trades after level 3. Right there, he uses his shield and his Q at the same time. So when they do that, you can just walk over or... W over his um, Q like that, like how, how we did just there. It's just a part of the matchup, so waiting for him to use his spells first is more advantageous for you. So you can do that. You need to be careful of his that ability right there. That should never hit me. I should just, you know, play a bit more safe or calculate the angle on his, you know, push on the minion so that I don't take damage. And yeah, it's just like this, you know, slowly trading, slowly farming. When he uses Q, you can make sure you walk outside of the range. And then right here, I'm thinking, well, he uses W and his Q, so I can probably all in. So we auto ignite E, and then we, you know, auto again, and then we use W, Q after that. So you want to Q as late as possible with your Conqueror, if you can, because you'll get more damage on your Qs from all the stacks, which kind of helped me kill him there, although it was really, really close. So yeah, and uh, he doesn't have teleport, so I know for a fact that I can push this wave. Uh, unless their jungler kills me, and if their jungler does, then obviously it's jungle gap. Unfortunately, my Nami rage quit bot lane after dying once, I think. Or like once or twice. And he starts coming mid, you know, using his spells on my wave and taking, you know, experience. <laughs> that was the main thing that, like, triggered me. Like, um, you know, I can't really play if he takes XP. So, you know, at that point, I have to think, well... What can I do? Should I stay mid or should I just try and go top? Because I win against Swain after level 6 especially. Because because I have Ignite and Nimbus and Conqueror. So maybe I should just swap with Mordekaiser. And I shove the wave thinking, you know, I can't be in this situation where my XP is getting soaked when I'm level 5. I think if I was level 8 or 9, it's fine. But the levels are too sensitive. So we just take the opportunity to go top. Mordekaiser dies, which is fine. And now we're top against Swain. Now I want to show you guys how to abuse your level up timer from 5 to 6. Right here, Swain is level 6. But it's fine, I know I just need 1 CS. So I let him hit me. Then I ult. And then I dodge some of his spells. Unfortunately, I missed the Qs, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll lose. <laughs> then I get another iteration of Qs. He misses his spells, so I can flash, auto E. And that's just the beauty of Conqueror, where, you know, you can miss your spells. And it's fine, because you're going to get multiple iterations of them. And also, you know, if you can just survive, like I did there, and dodge a bit, you know, you get multiple chances. And, I mean, that's why it's good against Swain as well, because if you do hit your spells, you kind of just one-shot him. So now I'm back in lane. I don't have ult, and we're going to fight Grubs. But something I know about Swain is that his ult surely has a longer cooldown than mine. So I spam ping aggressively for my team to go in, since Swain is, you know, not really that strong of a champion without his ult. So we just go in, we Q. He lives with 1 HP, but we have Ignite. And then right here, to maximize my DPS against Rakan, I walk up and then I auto once before using my spells and then auto ring again. So just to do more DPS, if you can walk up to your opponent and then auto attack before your combo, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, Scion starts matching me and I'm thinking, he's so tanky, what do I do? But then my jungler's coming, so I waste my W on purpose on the wave, hoping that it will bait Scion in, which it did. 
So that's something you can do and abuse sometimes. If you know your jungler's coming, just do something like that where you just W the wave and use your spells. Especially if you have Conqueror, as I said earlier. Because you're going to get multiple iterations of it. And, you know, it's easier to bait people in and still be pretty strong. So now I'm back in lane. I'm pretty fed. I have Voltaic, Dark, Extra Longsword. So I stop his base, which is great. And right here, my W is going to be a 3 second cooldown-ish. So I walk up trying to ult him. Because if I auto E, I'll get my W straight away. But he, he gets away. So instead, I WW auto attack with my Voltaic. And then I ult. This is a combo you can do when you have Voltaic. It's pretty decent. You know, you can ult either before. Or you can auto before. Or you can auto after your ult. Either way, it's kind of fine. So now I'm going mid. Nami uses all her spells on the Swain. But then it gets really awkward because I get hit by a spell. And I lose a bunch of health. And I was thinking it's a bit bad that I did that. Because my ult is literally up in like... 10 seconds so when your ult is up in 10 seconds it's best not to fight or do anything weird um but i see Lee Sin, so i'm able to do that unfortunately i failed the auto attack because i got a bit tilted um from like the trade before that but what i should do is just stay under tower and hit the lease in and play a bit more by reaction of the swain's like pull because swain didn't use the pull um but also I was scared of Lee Sin ult so either way it's kind of bad because swain gets shut down but it's fine. I don't like this Nami, so... Now I'm bot lane, uh, but as I'm pushing, my team is fighting, which is bad because I don't have teleport. However, I'm pretty fed, so I don't keep pushing, knowing that I can probably contribute to the fight. If I felt like I couldn't, I might have just stayed bot and tried to get the tower. We just jump in. I realize I failed my W in a pretty bad way, so... Right here, instead of auto-attacking the Ezreal to kill him, I E him again, so I get my W back faster, so I can chase down the Rakan and the Lee Sin. So that's something to keep in mind when you're playing Zed and, you know, someone's about to die to your death mark. Think about whether you want to E them again or if you want to just kill them straight away. Um, right there, you know, it was very handy to E them again so I can get my W back faster. But a lot of people would just auto attack and it's good not to autopilot into just doing stuff, you know, you should think it through, I guess, in real time. Something I want to show you guys here, some mid game or mid to late game sort of macro. So as an assassin, you want to be on the flank. Instead of being with my team here, it's pretty important that I'm in mid lane, I think. Because then I got a good flank position right there, just to poke them out a bit. So that's just a small little thing. It's important to keep in mind your position with respect to both to the enemy team and your team. And, you know, right there, when I just did that W combo, it's pretty good that I'm in mid lane instead of just with my team. Because, you know, I'm able to kind of force them away. And if not force them away, I would at least be in a good position to threaten them. And they end up just conceding the Baron anyways, but yeah, just a small little tip there. And now with Baron, I'm shoving mid. I have five items with boots, very strong. Uh, we start running bot. I see the fight, I'm thinking, yes, these are all my kills. You see Rakan uses ult, so that's why it's important to look. And I just go onto Ezreal, I know he's probably dead by Q anyways. E the Rakan who flashed onto me. WQ auto E, ignite the Lee Sin at the end for triple kill. And then now, um, we want to push mid, probably check blue if we want, but they end up surrendering the game. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.